slight headwind. Somebody lost their disc. Not R12, that's F12. Get real close to the truck. Yeah, fuel. Watch the deck on the neck on a new girl. Still get full 90 on the jackknife. These cul-de-sacs at the end of these little private roads, they are an absolute necessity. I don't, there's not one of these driveways that's, we'd be backing on out of here. Welcome back, guys. This is V-Belt and Son. Saw the last video or so, maybe ago. Finally got my new trailer, two-year wait. Got to go back and check it out, but a 40k rated gooseneck from Diamond C. Got the three inch BMW ball in the bed of the new truck here. But we're gonna haul the Prime Tech new location, just a quick little jaunt across the road, across the freeway, and I'm gonna take you guys along for the ride. So let's get this rig loaded up. And just for reference, the machine weighs about 25,000 pounds. This trailer is stickered at 9,700 plus the deck on the neck and chain binders and fuel. That's a lot of weight behind the truck. Grossing 40 is a thing of the past. We're a little bit above that. So we need to get programmed here. He's gonna back up on the shoulder. You see him backing up right there? Oh, perfect. Terrible timing. That's how it goes though. Nobody will come around all day until you need them. tilted switch over the bucket quick Haas is gonna do a little digging fill in that right there some dirt you got to get the chips out of the way property owners actually gonna cut the check right now waiting on them we're gonna roll on out of here old 5500 do some work we got a can i'll give you wings let's go i'm just gonna take off their jaw jacking too much Be right back. What's that? You give that to Haas. I'll be right back. Alrighty. See ya. This is a first gear little hill. Staying. No point in going to second and just burn on the converter a little bit harder. One down for the automatic. Can't lock the. I don't know. Ford, Chev, they probably lock it first. We're still in the six speed auto. <sighs> Crazy how easily it can move 35,000 pounds. Automatically, I just beat my jerky. No stick shift. We headed back to the job that uh, we just ran out of time last summer working on. Realistically, it just getting too dry. It's right across the freeway. So rather than hauling this sucker all the way home, we got a snowstorm coming in. But just haul it straight to the next job. I think I'm gonna let the homeowner go by. Driving a Jeep. He's actually uh, drives like a Super 10 dump truck. I'm on it. Gotta go get it ready. Got some hillage coming our way. Downhill, uphill, railroad tracks, freeway, whole nine. This trailer is the uh, probably end goal for I'd say what anybody in my position is kind of aiming for. Not bragging, just talking. Hydraulic disc brakes, hutch suspension with the big axles, Alcoas, just to throw in a little bit matching with the truck. These hills right here. They give this truck a run for its money. I think I might try it without the deck on the neck. 
because the deck on the neck would be for if I got a another rig that was slightly bigger than this so it could handle just a little bit more you know unnecessary payload because this prime is the biggest machine that we have 24 and a half 25,000 pounds I think is actually full of fuel too but these hills are no joke right here I'll tell you what boys it's, it's funny when somebody actually comes to town and you know they see a minimal amount of town and they're like man I understand why you want that engine brake the engine brake the trucks having the bigger brakes with the 5500 3500 will do this stuff but having a trailer that can stop everything I'm running my brakes on two two that's it just two on there I ran them on four for a little bit when I first hauled the prime out this is my second time hauling it with the new trailer and we actually had a little bit of uh, beyond smell on one of them got a little hot because the trailer was doing all the work the truck wasn't really doing much but I don't know sometimes you just got I don't know literally every one of my trailers it seems like you end up just getting a little bit hot on one brake as they break in for like the first round or so like that comment below if you've had that kind of a deal this it's tight right here you better check over just a little bit or else I'm gonna tickle you but coming down through here second gear it's locked up and it's holding me back a little bit but it's a lower RPM that's where the VGT exhaust brake does good because it's still holding back 100 plus at a lower rpm so i gotta unfortunately right pedal doesn't get touched the left one does a lot anyway just a little quick little jaunt like that but early trips with this thing so far my old trailer same exact rig except for a little bit different steel and uh it had 12k disc axles this one's got 6k 16 and the 16s, I don't know what they changed. They got a bigger rotor or what. But this old girl, she stops real good. Some good old railroad tracks. First time I drove semi. Maybe second time. I think no, second time. Go across the railroad tracks. You want to make sure you got the gear you want before you get onto the tracks. And you're supposed to stop when you're a commercial kind of guy. But we need momentum every once in a while. That's kind of a nasty little whoop to get up on the road there. Gonna double down on the train tracks today. This one here's got the long, long haul kind of rigs. The other one I saw, short track or something. I don't know what the deal was. Old motor's behind us again. There he goes, hopping on the freeway. Got her in tow haul for you folks that say I don't put it tow haul. Honestly, this truck Pretty much does exactly what I want it to do on a regular basis no matter what but when you're really just trying to get good run at these hills you're leaving the tow haul and it keeps you in that gear for just a little bit oh look a bandit track chipper up on the hill what's he doing there who's this guy We've got a winter storm warning going on right now and I'm trying to I'd like to get over here drop this one off ideally come back and they'd be done with the dirt work and haul the mechlek off and it's gonna be dark, I think, before we get it done. Look at that old dozer there. What's he doing? I don't think I've ever gone this route on this road. It always seems like I'm going out towards the freeway. I don't know why. But we got uh, three miles. <laughs> Sometimes it just lines up good. Got a couple acres yet to finish over here. We just, we needed some moisture in the ground before we came back. And now we might get them snowed in here, but we'll find out. He's screaming now. A stop sign right there. All right, sounds good. Folks that think that these don't stop, mind you, my brakes are only on two. I was doing 40 something mile an hour just then. Tap the brakes once, she downshifts, and that's downhill. Could always use more power and more engine brake, but I tell you what, we have trailer brakes and truck brakes on tap. Turning right, aren't we? I was wondering which one of these roads it was going to pop me out on. Now you know, guys, where we're going to be working. I have to bleep that out now. Look at this. I'm like work play TV. I tore it in the snow. Just kidding. Tyson is definitely one of my older YouTube buddies. Word on the street is the Fords are getting replaced by Dodges. <laughs> 
What gear are we in? Third gear? Just these in this hill? I'll take it. We're just putt putting. Oh, yeah, check out this old barn thing. Abandoned. That's, just, that's like, it'd be perfect. Millions of people would love to have something like that on their property for a shop. Abandoned. Figures. I think it worked up that road right there. No, no. That one? No. Where am I? West Big House. This is a towing video. We're talking about the trailer. She's doing good back there. Little bits of information I like to talk about at this rig. The reason why I went with a deck on the neck, it's a bolt-on. I wanted to see how the trailer would behave empty. Because the last one, it almost felt like it was just not quite enough empty tongue weight. And it would huck and buck just a little bit. Like if you hit a speed bump, kind of a little bit. You could hear the ball slapping a little bit. <laughs> but this one, uh, it's definitely on its own. It's a little bit heavier of a trailer. I don't think my old one is quite tagged right on its weight, calling it 7,500 empty. But this one's it says weighed at Diamond Sea at 9,700. So I think that's pretty close. It definitely feels a little heavier. Still got a mile? What the heck? I guess I am going slow. But it feels great towing down the road. And I'll say, man, I don't know how many Diamond Sea trailers I've towed or ridden in. You know, somebody had one. But not knocking the brand but it's almost like you see just like a little bit of them you know kicking out the side just a little bit like the axles aren't quite perfect and it's not much at all but you stare at it long enough you go is that is that kind of kicked out that side just a little bit but i believe this one is right down broadway all right this is starting to look familiar yeah because this is i turned around right here before Are you gonna pass me it's snowing cat like I'm three mile an hour off the speed limit. Dummy. I would have definitely passed right here. This is a lot better spot. <laughs> Need a camper? That guy's got all of them. Yeah. But this one actually rides significantly better. I don't know what the deal is there with it. It's got stronger steel. Not really. Maybe just because it's got a little bit more weight. Maybe that's what it is. Ah, we're coming up on my turn here. We got a Tesla behind us, and this is where it gets tricky. Because I gotta tackle the left lane a little bit to get in the right lane. Man, it's real close. Where's it at? Gotta start recognizing stuff. It's been more than one day since I was here, and I forget. Did a one day for that guy, so we're the next road on our right. Yep. GPS, yeah, I recognize that spot there. Look at the snow start to come in. Put the blinker on now so the Tesla knows where right. we mean. Did a whole bunch of dirt work and stuff here. And graveled so I can pull all the way in this road. I used to have to unload right there, which the counties don't work there, figure, after we've been there. But now I can pull all the way in here, and there's a freaking narrow little bridge that I, I don't really trust. I've got to make sure we dead nuts this thing, or else we're shake free on the camera. The damn bridge washed out right there. Let's go inspect that before I go across it with oh half a million dollars. Oh, I gotta turn that off. What are we working with here? I think the next rig when I'm fully loaded is gonna weigh more. Damn morons. Washed out. We had nasty, nasty weather this last year. I don't think our driveway had much to do with it because we got a big old ditch and culvert and everything. It just straight up washed down the road. Here, I'll go up there and open the gate quick. What's this? Oh, that's my carabiner. <laughs> I put that thing on. This is how you do it right here. Come on, custom. Come on, work with me here, you son of a gun. Come on, my bar up destroying my hand. All right, well, I'm just gonna kind of keep it on the high side a little bit. Looking at it from here, seems okay. Not much of a haul, but you know, sometimes it works out that way in your favor, and you just appreciate those moments. So, 
let's get across this thing that done I really I think it'll be all right could always just unload the rig just the trailer I'm worried about I got some pretty good tongue weight on it but oh by the way I am running look at the big ass big a I'm calling this trailer BA by the way uh, look at that cup she's BA let's just do the honors for low because we don't need to be a hero Where you at? Be honest with you. Go to second. I was a little bit worried there. All right, go to first. <laughs> it said, hey, 35,000 pounds, that's where you're going to be. Well, at least we're in the driveway, not blocking the road in case somebody's trying to get out to their mom's house because it's snowing. You know, get the Jenny running. All right, let's get her unloaded. see if by the next time we come out here if that thing's covered in snow <sighs> glad we got this new driveway in because that makes life a lot easier first time i came in here pulled up there unloaded backed out oh it sucked great now we got somebody coming in look at that <laughs> oh boys we're running out of daylight i mean it, the sun's already left but <laughs> you know speed of light kind of takes a second to you know goes around the mountain anyway the mechalek weighs 22 by itself and i got the grapple and a multi head on it so i think we're about the same weight try getting over there before we lose the sun completely across those stupid little bridges we're gonna give it a little bit more trailer break this run because the roads have gotten weird how you doing back there fella need light we can even sauce it up a little bit more we got some on the truck too yep yep the great northern isn't out doing diamond sea on the bright scale wow went till i spun out again made it farther so more tongue weight probably or less overall weight maybe oh didn't tie one of those down maybe what the heck oh dang <laughs> I remember with the OG 5500 and uh, Texas Pride Trail, I didn't have like no backup lights. So doing this kind of stuff was, it wasn't, I mean, you could do it, whatever, who cares, but man, this is different now. I'm glad the snow cut out. You guys can see, wow, it looks great through the camera. And it's like night vision, sounds good. I think we're going to end this one here. It's going to go home. Definitely below freezing right now. Got a nice bite in the air. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the new trailer in action. See if I can get her turned around and on to the next one. See ya. I got my I'm not a trucker hat on just for this segment. We're going to talk about the legalities behind using a setup like this to tow this kind of weight. And just the simple fact that it is so much easier to have one of these things in your fleet. So much more practical, economical. The insurance is significantly cheaper than a semi. The registration is way cheaper than a semi. And if you disconnect the trailer, you can take this thing through the drive through run errands, put the family in the back, and you take it on a road trip and go on vacation.
it hits so many different levels that it just makes so much more sense. And a lot of folks say, well, just because you can doesn't mean you should tow that kind of weight. No, they're rated to tow that. The trucks are rated to tow more than ever. The trailers are rated to tow more than ever. And I think that was probably one of the bigger handicaps on setups like this in the past was that the trailers didn't have the rating or the good brakes to make this happen. And I've preached this for years is to have good brakes. Service brakes, yeah, you got to have those. Those are like last ditch, but you always want to have your engine brake doing its excellent job of just maintaining your speed as you're going down the road rather than having to tap your brakes all the time. Now, granted, this kind of weight is the most I have honestly towed with a pickup because my new trailer I believe it is slightly heavier because there's a lot more steel involved with this one the different it's got I beams to C channel and I have the deck and the neck on it and you know this and that and I do save a little bit of weight because I got the Alcoa's but at the end of the day I'm still grossing I got at least 35,000 behind the truck right there in the um, video and I think the Mechlec with the attachments is right there in the same ballpark and the truck is about 11 to 12 so how it all boils down for legal reasons and stuff is when I I've said this many times before I talked to DOT before I bought anything if I'm planning on running a 30k trailer behind a 5500 the guy said all right well you got 19.5 worth of truck you got 30,000 pounds worth of trailer add those up you got 49.5 and I said well, I don't think I plan on going that high I think I want to be around 40,000 pounds he's like all right well you just make sure your combined weight rating you know add those two numbers up and check your tires make sure your tires have enough rating added up to cover that kind of load and then you just buy your sticker accordingly so with my first setup i was running a 30k trailer 19.5 truck 49.5 nice simple easy math i got 45k sticker because i didn't even plan on going over 45 and at, i think the closest i ran was like 42 which is right there and you know we're getting kind of up there truck handled just fine trailer brakes were minimal back then because I had electric drum brakes and I wasn't too big of a fan on those but it was a cheap trailer cheap brakes and you get what you pay for fast forward to the setup I'm running now I have a 40k trailer and a 19.5 truck so I'm sitting at 59.5 I ain't even gonna get close to 59.5 right about 50 would be fine and I think in this video I'm getting close to 50 ish but the price between a 50k sticker and a 54k sticker, there is no difference. That is the room you have. It's like if you order that 50k sticker, you can have it in a 54. So might as well just get the 54 just in case that one run. I got enough rating to go across the board on my truck and trailer. But if I don't have my legal sticker up there, because if you go over that legal sticker, then you're into another ballpark and it gets expensive on the fines. And it's literally a free upgrade on my sticker to go to a 54. So why not? So as soon as the guys see the 54 on there, like, oh, you're paying extra money for nothing. No, if it was on an F-150, I'd be paying extra money for nothing. But it's on a 5500 with a 40K trailer behind it. So I have all kinds of tire rating, all kinds of gross vehicle weight rating, and or whatever. You know, that's just how it works. When pull up a tow rating, there's no tow rating sticker on anything. When you see a semi, they have their truck. They have their what their truck axles are rated for, and then you can't go over that. But if you put a Jeep on it, now you got more axles to put weight on, so you have more trailer back there. So the more trailer you have, and you just gotta use your own discretion and make sense of all that. But I just wanted to boil that down, and I've said this a million times, but I know I'll get the negative answers in the comments, saying, hey, you shouldn't be doing that. And you just saw it, it took it. Engine brake alone going down a hill, it brought me down on speed. Barely even had to touch the brakes, and like I said in here, those disc brakes on the 16K axles, they're made out of something fierce because they're slowing me down. There is nothing wrong with my 12K axles, only running them at four and a half. That's barely using the brakes on tap. There's, I still got another five and a half of brake power to go. They'll lock them up, no problem. So imagine how much more I got to play with on this big axle because anyway, that's enough rant. I think I pretty much covered all the subjects right there, but the new rig is doing excellent. Very happy with it and let's rock and roll. Another couple of guys have definitely fallen victim to the idea of getting a gooseneck and run it behind their pickup for local missions like this because of the versatility of it. 
and um, I'll show you guys them in the future. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Later.